Williams. This is Adrian Williams. This is going to be her. Uh, for how you feeling today? A little nervous, but I'm excited. What are you excited about? And why are you excited? I'm excited for the Holy Spirit to use me. I'm, I'm excited because I have a lot of family and friends who are coming into town, and I'm just excited to begin a new journey and a new chapter. Let us stay in for our scripture reading. We're coming from Acts 16, verses 6 through 15. Paul and his friends went from Phrygia to Galatia, and the Holy Spirit would not let them preach in Asia. After they arrived in Mysia, they tried to go into the city, but the Spirit of Jesus would not let them. So they went through Mysia until they came to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of someone from Macedonia who was standing there and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we began looking for a way to go to Macedonia. We were sure that God had called us to preach the good news there. We sailed straight from Troas to Samothrace. And the next day arrived in Neapolis. From there we went to Philippi, which is the Roman colony in the first district of Macedonia. We spent several days there. Then on the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to a place by the river where we thought there would be a Jewish meeting place for prayer. We sat down and talked with the women who came. One of them was Lydia, who was from the city of Thyatira and sold expensive purple cloth. She was a worshiper of the Lord God, and he made her willing to accept what Jesus was saying. Then after she and her family were baptized, she kept on begging us. If you think I really do have faith in the Lord, come stay in my home. Finally, we accepted her invitation. Amen. Praise be to God for the word of God. Thanks. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Lord God, I thank you for this time with friends, family, and fellowship. Lord God, thank you for the safe travel of my family, my church family, my work family, and my immediate and extended family. I appreciate your allowing me to influence their lives. Lord God, give us grace to hear and heed your message this morning. Father God, make Lydia come alive in our hearts. Let your sweet Holy Spirit rest and rule in this place as we continue to allow the acts of the women in Scripture to lead us today. Lord God, thank you for your preparation and your work behind the scenes in our lives. Continue to examine our hearts, making us willing vessels of your word and faithful stewards of your promises. Yes. Allow us to use your resources to be a blessing to your people. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yes. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming out to support me. A special thank you to my family. I love you all. Thank you so much for traveling from far and near to celebrate this day with me. And thank you so much to people from work because 
we never know who we influence. And the Lord sends people to speak into our lives. And I know the teachers that are here today with their families, they have truly been a blessing to me. So if you're an educator and you're here this morning, will you please stand? Following the Holy Spirit's lead, Lydia seeks to save them. As we continue to examine the acts of the women this month, highlighting God's leadership through women yes. in the spread of the gospel, we take a moment to closely consider Lydia, the conversion of a wealthy Gentile believer in a meeting place of prayer down by the riverside. Lydia seeks the Savior. Who is Lydia? We meet Lydia from the city of Thyatira. Known for its production of turkey red, a crimson colored purple made from the roots of the matador plant. It is thought that Lydia's business sold Tyrrhenian purple, which was derived from marine mullets, the snails of the sea. I thought it was interesting. Yeah. As a seller of purple cloth, Lydia had to be a woman of great wealth and considerable skill, a savvy businesswoman who traveled from her hometown of Thyatira to Philippi to sell purple cloth clothing and embroidered goods. You had to spend money to make money in her line of work. As such, Lydia probably had homes in both Thyatira and Philippi, traveling back and forth as needed. Lydia was also described as a worshiper of God. She met with the Jewish believers to pray, praise, and worship him. This is interesting, as Lydia was a Gentile woman. Why would a Gentile choose to worship among the Jewish women? Could it be that Lydia realized that there is more to life than the influence, goods, services that great wealth could afford and that money could buy? God saw Lydia, a wealthy business owner. Lydia, a dealer of purple goods. Lydia, a Gentile worshiper of God. God saw Lydia seeking after himself, so he sought after her by sending the Apostle Paul to her. <coughs> Have you ever wondered how the Holy Spirit works behind the scenes in your life? Wow. Today's scripture answers these questions, demonstrating five ways the Holy Spirit works in our lives. We see the gentle moving of the Holy Spirit interrupting the life of the Apostle Paul to seek after Lydia, completely changing Paul's plans, Lydia's life, and the city in Philippi. God gives direction for the journey. Yes, he does. Paul and his friends went through Phrygia and Galatia, but the Holy Spirit would not let them preach in Asia. After they arrived in Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not let them. So they went through Mysia until they came to Troas. In Acts 16, Paul has begun his second missionary journey. Along with Silas and Timothy, he is once again commissioned to preach and teach the gospel of Jesus Christ. The apostles found that the Holy Spirit would not let them travel into Asia or Bithynia. Instead, they had to head towards Troas. Have you ever been delayed? Has God, by way of the Holy Spirit, ever changed your plans or your direction? Whether you were traveling on vacation, to work, or even school, we all have been in scenarios where delays seem inevitable. Sometimes, after a brief time of waiting, the delay subsides and we're able to continue along our desired path. Other times, however, we must deviate from our preferred route, thus changing our direction. How do you respond when changes happen in your life? Are you willing to change directions 
so that the Holy Spirit can bring glory from your life? God loves you so much that he will move heaven and earth to align you with his plan and purpose for your life. So Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Luke began their journey with one plan, but the Holy Spirit intervened, changing their direction. They didn't know it yet, but the Holy Spirit was sending them straight to a Macedonian named Lydia. At Troas during the night, Paul had a vision of someone from Macedonia who was standing there begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we began looking for a way to go to Macedonia. The Holy Spirit gives vision for the journey. After the Holy Spirit changes the apostles' direction, he also gives Paul a vision from heaven of a man from Macedonia. The apostles are willing to follow the Holy Spirit, allowing him to guide their steps as he completely changes their trajectory. Through a vision from heaven, we see the Holy Spirit again seeking after Lydia, sending the apostles straight to Philippi. The apostles sailed straight from Troas to Samothrace, and the next day arrived in Neapolis. From there they went to Philippi, which is a Roman colony in the first district of Macedonia. They spent several days in Philippi. The Holy Spirit prepared their destination. The apostles are excited. They finally arrived at Philippi. It's a leading Roman colony in the first district of Macedonia. So what does verse tell us? They did what we all would do. They spent several days searching the city. Yeah. One thing you should know, there were strict rules about bringing new religions in to yeah. Philippi. Yeah. It was written on the city gates. Yeah. Wow. So as they searched the city, it would not have surprised them that there was no synagogue in Philippi. Just think for a moment. Has this ever happened to you? God answers your prayers, allows you to travel to a new place, get a new job, buy a new home, begin a new relationship, and then gives no further instructions, <laughs> allowing you to spend several days in a situation while he's setting up the scene for his work to be accomplished. Yeah. Sometimes God places us in the middle of a scenario before unveiling his master plan to us. The Holy Spirit allows Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Luke to spend several days inside the city, knowing that the woman whom they saw, remember Lydia? And the miracle that they anticipated, preaching and teaching the gospel, would begin on the Sabbath at the house of prayer among the women outside the city gate. So let's summarize. We see the Holy Spirit seeking after Lydia. How, you may ask? The Holy Spirit sought after Lydia by giving the apostles direction for their journey. The Holy Spirit sought after Lydia by giving the apostles vision for their journey. The Holy Spirit sought after Lydia by preparing the city of Philippi to receive the good news of the Savior. Yeah. He prepared their destination. And now we will see the Holy Spirit seeking after Lydia by changing Lydia's heart. So on the Sabbath, they went outside the city gate to a place by the river where they thought there would be a Jewish meeting place for prayer. They sat down and talked with the women who came. One of them was Lydia, who was from the city of Thyatira and sold expensive purple cloth. She was a worshiper of the Lord God, and he made her willing to accept what Paul was saying. The Holy Spirit changes Lydia's heart. It is here on the Sabbath day 
down by the riverside at the Jewish place of prayer that Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Luke encounter the true movers and shakers in this Philippian society. And guess who they were? A group of women. <laughs> Imagine how they felt. They had traveled all this way to teach a group of women. Among these women is Lydia. Lydia, a leading businesswoman in Philippi from Thyatira. Lydia, a seller of purple cloth and a seeker of the Lord. Paul may not have known it at the time of his arrival, but the Holy Spirit directed his steps, renewed his vision, prepared his destination, and changed his heart for this very moment. As Lydia taught the women that day, God worked in Lydia's heart and made her receptive to the gospel. She was able to be attentive to the gospel message and willing to accept it as truth in her life. The Holy Spirit's transformative power changed her heart and allowed her to comprehend and acknowledge her need for the Savior, Jesus Christ. Lydia is saved. Lydia, a wealthy Gentile woman, receives Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Praise be to God. Paul, Silas, Timothy, Luke, and all of heaven alike rejoice over Lydia's salvation and the spread of the gospel to the continent of Europe, as Lydia is credited as the first European convert. You would think that this would be enough to shout about, but of course, there's more. After she and her family were baptized, she kept on begging us. If you think I really do have faith in the Lord, come, stay in my home. Finally, we accepted her invitation. Lydia boldly solidifies her commitment to Christ Jesus when she opens her home to the apostles. She graciously responds to the Holy Spirit's transformative power in her life by pledging her resources to help others. How do you respond to the gospel message? Lydia immediately took up her cross, fully embodying her calling. She allowed her natural talents of leadership and hospitality to empower her spiritual gift of giving to meet an immediate need of the people and the church at Philippi. She provided a place of worship within the city gates. Don't miss this. Remember verse 12? Remember when Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Luke were walking around the city praying that God would use them in a mighty way? The Holy Spirit has answered their prayers. Upon accepting Lydia's invitation, they now have a place inside the city gates where they can share the good news of Jesus Christ even without an established synagogue. So the gospel is taught in Philippi. Lydia invites the apostles and all who travel with them into our home and supports them as they spread the gospel. The disciples witness great miracles, face imprisonment and persecution as they traveled and taught throughout Philippi. Even still, we can see Lydia's influence, skill, and leadership in the growth and development of the church when she is mentioned again in verse 40 of Acts 16. Clearly, Lydia's home had become a chief meeting place for the Lord's disciples. The Holy Spirit had predestined before the beginning of time that he would use Paul's testimony and teaching to save a brilliant, resourceful worshiper named Lydia, living in Macedonia. In verses 6 through 8 of Acts 16, 
The apostles did not understand why the Lord was delaying their direction, renewing their pathway, and changing their destination. But God did. Their obedience to the intervention of the Holy Spirit led to the salvation of Lydia and the establishment of the church at Philippi in Lydia's home. Without Lydia, there would be no church in Philippi. Now think about it. If the Holy Spirit could begin saving the souls of the people in Europe with the conversion of one fire-retiring seller of purpose in the city of Philippi, just think of all the great and grand things he has in store for you. What has God created you to do? God has a plan and a purpose for your life. Just as Lydia sought after God and was saved, God sought after her. God seeks after us as well. Our Father, the Lord our God, rejoiced as he created you. He carefully crafted every hair on your head and ordered your every step. God loves you and he seeks after you. God sought after you 2,000 years ago when he saw that you would sin and fall short of his law. God sought after you when he came to earth as Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, to die on the cross for your sins and mine. God sought after you when he fulfilled the penalty of the law so that no man could perish and die apart from him. God sought after you when he created you with eternity in mind. You will live forever. And God desires that you live eternally with him. Paul's message to Lydia down by the riverside that Sabbath day was confirmation of just this. If you seek after the Savior, the Savior will seek after you. Seek God passionately and let God find you. For God seeks after you just as you seek after him. Wheat Street, today, God seeks after you as well. How will you respond? As we strive to be the church in the heart of Atlanta, with Atlanta in its heart, how will we respond to Lydia's example above? The example of Dorcas from last week, the examples of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the sisters who accepted the call of the Savior, praying, speaking, seeking, teaching, building, and spreading the good news of the Savior before us. The Holy Spirit seeks after you. Yes, it does. If you ask him, he will give you direction yes. and vision for your journey. Yes, it does. If you ask him, he will prepare your destination yes. and open your heart. Yes. If you ask him, he will equip you and lead others into salvation yes. through your witness yes. and your testimony. Yes. God is seeking after you. Will you seek after him? So let's put it in perspective. How is the Holy Spirit seeking after you today? Do you watch for, recognize, and respond to God's direction, redirection, vision, and provision for your life? What is God preparing you to accomplish for his kingdom? Do you see the transformative hand of the Holy Spirit moving in your life today? God is seeking after you. Won't you seek after him? The Holy Spirit desires to dwell within you, completing a good work until Christ returns. We exist to develop mature disciples of Jesus Christ 
who make a real difference in the world by actively seeking the love, justice, freedom, liberation, and peace of God. As God's church, how are we meeting the needs of his people? Here on Auburn Avenue, in the city of Atlanta, throughout our wonderful state of Georgia, inside this United States of America, and even throughout the world at large, what is God calling We Street to do and accomplish to advance the kingdom of God in the earth? We Street, how will you respond as God's church in this, the 21st century? We must decide how we're going to follow Lydia's lead. We can follow her by seeking and doing the will of the Savior. We Street, now is the time to act. The acts of the women, what are you contributing? Thank you. I'm going to ask our associate pastor, Pastor Reverend Dr. Lacey Alpha, to pray over this picture this time. Amen. Let us pray. Yes. Spirit of the living God, yes. fall fresh yes. on us. Yes. Fall fresh on this family. Yes, Lord. Yes. Fall fresh. Yes, on Adrian. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Melt her. Mold her. Yeah. Fill her. Yes, Lord. Use her. Yes. Spirit of the living God, fall yes. fresh. Yes. Holy. Yes, Lord. Thank you. God, we thank you for this historic day. Yes, thank you. Thank you. In the life of Wheat Street Baptist Church. Yes. God, we thank you for the word that we heard Hallelujah. delivered today yes. by Adrian Wheat. Yes. We thank you, God, for the path that you've led her through yes. up to this point. Yes. Far from her own knowledge. You knew yes. before she was conceived mm. Hallelujah. that mm. this day would come. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. And God, we thank you that thank you, Lord. after Adrian thought she was where she needed to be, mm. you redirected her path. Yes, Lord. <laughs> and because you Sir. redirected her path, yes. um, and gave her a new destination. Yes, yes, Lord. We are here witnessing today. Yes, Lord. How you have moved already in her life. Yes. And so we pray, God, that you would consecrate her now yes. to your service. Yes. By the power of grace divine, yes. let her soul look up with a steadfast hope. Yes. And her will be lost yes. in that. Grant her wisdom, Lord, yes. to discern the mind of Christ. Yes. Grant her compassion, Lord, yes. to have compassion for human beings. Yes. Grant her love, Lord, yes. 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 love for all whom she is called yes. to serve. Yes. And then, God, we ask you to strengthen and nourish Adrian's faith yes. through the challenges and the rewards of studying your word yes. through the undergirding of prayer in her life yes. and God that her work might be the work that she's called to do yes. and that it might be fruitful for the work of the church God, we pray that right now your spirit will fall on her, yes. rest on her, yes. this day, not just this day, 
but every day yes. from now on. Yes. All the days that are to come. Yes. Bless this congregation. Yes. Help us to nurture her. Yes. Love her. Yes. Support her. Walk with her yes. in this ministry she is called to. Yes. And then God help us to search our minds, yes. our hearts, yes. our spirits. Yes. To determine if we are responding to your call. Yes. The call that you've given on our lives. What is it, God, that we are doing that we need to stop doing? And what is it that we are not doing that you're ready for us to stop? Yes. We praise you, we magnify you, we lift up your holy name because you are so worthy yes. to be praised. Thank you. Thank In the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, let the church say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> on behalf of the Williams family, the McCluster family, the Jordan family. Most importantly, we're all members of God's family. Yeah. And we're here to hand these flowers to my sister, my sister, your sister in Christ. Praise God. Churches of the South and the American Baptists nationally for the American Baptist Churches USA. I want to present this symbol for American Baptist women in ministry, which you may display uh, since you are now licensed. Thank you. 
and we praise God. Good morning again. <laughs> Thank you so much for your support of me. I am so appreciative to each and every one of you. Many of you have been there for me since I was eight years old and first walked into these doors. I thank you for everything that you've instilled in me. I thank the Lord for his gifting of me. Even though I wanted to run far away. We're here today and I'm so thankful that you all can celebrate this time with me. It's, it's definitely a blessing and I don't take it for granted. I'm so thankful.